My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control. Welcome to Inspire Blessings with Jimmy Prince, and I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And today my guest is uh, Louis B. Silver, and you authored the book called We Are the Clay. So if I could kind of show you here. And so we're going to be uh, speaking to Louis today about his book and his t uh, testimony. Thank you so much for being my guest. You're Appreciate welcome. it. So, uh, Louis, um, did you ever think that you would have written a book? Well, I've been thinking, but I was also encouraged mm -hmm. to write a book. Okay. Now, in what way? Well, um, in 1999, I began attending HGT, mm -hmm. and I was invited to one of the retreats. Okay. The men's retreat? Yes, men's retreat. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, well, it was a time of fellowship, and I started sharing some of my thoughts, and I was encouraged by uh, some of the men said, Louis, this is great. Keep, keep going, keep going, this is good. And uh, since 1999, then I started writing. But the more I write, the more came to my mind, to my heart, and I keep putting it all together. So in this book, we have dates when I start writing those. All right, so we're gonna, so we're gonna f uh, find out what you actually wrote in yeah. there and, and what the book is about and things like that. But first of all, We Are Clay, where did you get that title? What, would you, what made well, you? Well, I do pot. Okay. I'm a potter. Potter, okay. So mm -hmm. that's how it, it came out. Right. And all these uh, balls of clays are people to me. They are friends, brothers. And the one missing are gone. They mm -hmm. gone with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So this is how I got inspired to, right. to write this book. Right. And so the thing is, is too, is um, Jesus talks about that we are the clay and that he is the potter yes. and that he molds us, mm -hmm. right? So it, that's probably also another reason why you may be thinking well, about that right title Well, right in the book, inside this, uh, as you can see, there's a uh, few, see it? Mm -hmm. The few pieces. Right. See those yeah. pieces? Yep, yep. And these are the pieces that you've done? Yes. Okay. And they're still in use. You know, my um, my son went on his honeymoon. He went to Bali, and they went to do a pottery class. <laughs> this was totally flat. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't shape. You know, it takes well, uh, it takes time to be an expert, right? Yes, of course. You, you have to you have to center the the clay right in. Uh, it's like a centering you into the will of God. And from there, once you're in the center of God, He will form you any way He wants it. He wants mm -hmm. to make you a vase, a plate, a dish, a bowl, so you let Him form you. And that's how you see all these pieces, they are different shape. Would you also relate it to the fact that if, um, when God is telling you to do something, and you do it, and you continue you know, to follow the will of God, that it's not a simple you know, clay pot, but now it's become a unique one. Yes. Right, more elaborate, right? Because the fact that you took that leap of faith and now God had worked with you more. He's, right. he's still working. Right? He's still, he's still uh, forming me. <laughs> now tell me this, were you always a Christian? Well, um, I believe that I was, but I was uh, in a way not working the way that I should work. Mm -hmm you know, friends, work, studies. And then uh, soon I realized that uh, that wasn't the way to live. Well, at what age did you realize well, that? Uh, I believe that I was uh, being a Christian. My mother, maybe she was a Catholic, I don't know. But a lot of things happened in my youth that mm -hmm. make me change my mind. I know there was something great mm -hmm. that was coming, but it wasn't the time until right. I realized now that my time is in the past. Okay, 
So I know that when people come to faith in, in Christ, they have a personal experience that opens their eyes to say, wow, he really is true, and I'm really a sinner. So do you have a distinctive time that you could say or, you know, or I, I, I came to the conclusion that without God, you cannot live. God mm -hmm. is, God is your, your light. God is the road. He's the one that directs you. Mm -hmm. It's like when he directed me to do this way or that way, he's directing us in life to do that. You know, the problem is today, there are so many gods, and people are following their God, thinking that it's the right God. You know, and um, so what makes your God different from their God? Well, because my God is love. Okay. My God has mercy. You see, we could, what Jesus has done for us, we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. God has given us His Son, so we can have the way. There's no separation now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that can save us except Jesus, through God. In Ephesians 2 and 9, we are saved by grace. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and so, like you said, our God is the God of love. Other God, false gods that you hear out there, some of them are the God of hate, the God of murder, you know, or, or the fact that, uh, you know, they want you to just worship, worship them, but, you know, it's, it's more like it's based on works rather than the grace of God yes. that we know. Yeah. Well, some people um, think God is money. Right, yeah. For, and it's money is, is an idol. Mm -hmm. You cannot put any idol. You cannot serve two gods. Mm -hmm. well, you serve God or you say the world or money or the things. Mm -hmm. There's only one God. He mm -hmm. will provide for you what you need. You need to possess uh, worldly things. Mm -hmm. You need to have only Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. And from there on, God will provide. Right. So do you have anything that might relate to what we just spoke about? In well, here? everything is, uh, is related in the book is about my experience uh, with people, my, uh, my time with the Lord. And, uh, All right, so give, us, give, give me an example. In the, in, the, in the book says, uh, in this part over here, it says, uh, His will will be done, but He will put into us a desire to do it. He's filling us with a purpose for the kingdom. It says, waiting for an opportunity should not be a problem, okay? But there must be a purpose in your heart to serve. We are being called to be servants because no titles get you up there, mm -hmm. only a servant. Mm -hmm. Welcome, faithful servant. Well, yeah, Jesus came down yes, to be Jesus a servant. Jesus came down to be a servant. Mm -hmm. And uh, Matthew 28, 19, 20 says, go. He's telling us, this is a great opportunity, go. So we hear that, go, then we go. Mm -hmm. We don't ask questions. When the Lord calls you, you go. It's like a, God has entrusted me to keep writing, and I cannot stop. Mm -hmm. There's two more books in, in the same sequence. There will be another book called We Are Vessels. Mm -hmm. And there's another book which is going to be in Spanish, following this pattern. Mm -hmm. so, once much is given, much is required. Well, you, you know what I say is that uh, God has a, a, a book written about each and every one of us, and in it, he's got what his will is for us to do. And he'll call us and ask us, and uh, you know, like that day, when I heard, do the book, and I was like, yes, you're right, that yes. makes sense, yeah. which it totally didn't make any sense because I have no experience in it. But because I said yes, and I did it, then he gave me more things to do. And so, so that's the thing, is, is that you have to have that willing heart and you have to have, take that leap of faith to know it's God's Amen, time yes. to do it. You have to keep doing it. That's like I say over here. Yeah. So yeah. what is it? It's not a book of poetry, but it's... It it's has a, some poetry, okay. yes. But, it, but it's like different <coughs> sections that actually have different thoughts or di different experience that you might have experienced and things like that. So if you could just read that whole page so people would uh, maybe understand well, okay. what that is. Okay, and it uh, says, uh, serving him will open your eyes to set opportunities to love others in a selfless way. 
That's Matthew 20, 19, 20. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You are his light in Ephesians 5, 8. You are his aroma, 2 Corinthians 2, 15. Taste the Lord, for he is good, Psalm 34, 8. I was hungry, and he fed me, Matthew 25, John 18. He's the salt of the earth, Matthew 5, 13, and 9, 50. Luke 14, 34, 1 Corinthians 6, 20. Okay, his fellowship with us, John 10, 10, and Matthew 4, 19. These are the scriptures that indicate us to serve him in a biblical term. Right, so right. Our deeds are connected to God. Mm -hmm. See, we owe God something that we can never repay. Right. See, sending his son to die for us oh, yeah. was a big sacrifice. We cannot even pay for what he had done. Yeah. But that's why he has called us to serve. Serve mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's why we are serving him in any capacity. He gave us different tasks different jobs, different opportunities. So we here in this world to take them and serve people with what we have. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, um, we're also here to, uh, because we're supposed to make disciples of men. Yes. You know, and this way, by that, by doing that, then people out there will be then sharing the good news to others. So this way, their eyes may be, the scales of unbelief might be removed and that they will come to know the truth. Like a Paul. <laughs> right, right. That's, uh, yeah, that, that, that's such a black and white, you know, yes. and it's like one day he killed the Christians, the other day, you know, the he next changed. day he changed. <laughs> a total and transformation. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, to me, uh, this means a lot, and sometimes I get up early in the morning, late at night, and then there's something. Sometimes I carry so many pieces of paper and then I'm writing this, I'm writing that. I say, wow, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> keep filling me, keep filling me, and I keep writing it. I say, he's like, a, he's, he's talking to you. Mm -hmm. Even when you're driving, you're driving and you're praying. Right. Whatever I'm doing, I'm just doing for the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it's my, uh, my feelings uh, as a God has put in my heart that I have to keep doing his work until uh, he calls me up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something written in, in the book here. It says, my journey began back in 1999 mm -hmm. at the, the men's retreat. Okay? Soon I realized that I was hungry and thirst for this knowledge. It's like when you, when you go into the Bible, mm -hmm. there's more that you, right. that you expect. And, but you have to keep searching and, look, and looking. Mm -hmm. There's a word, uh, I think it's in uh, Hebrew, it says Selah. In, in uh, Psalms, it says that you have Selah, I mean, you have to stop, meditate, pause. it's like a pause, and eat that, right. eat that. Right. So it's like... Sometimes uh, I think uh, because the world we live in is we don't do a lot of sila because we're just so busy. Yeah, running. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. And um, this time in, in our generation, people need to really come to, to faith because look at all the stuff that's happening. Look at all the, um, you know, the evil one out there and trying to deceive the people. Lots, uh, the, the world is in turmoil right now. They don't know what they're looking for. But there's one. Mm -hmm. They're not looking, they're looking down. They're not looking for salvation. They're not looking for help. They're but just looking for don't something you, different. Right, but don't you also think that knowing that Jesus Christ, you know, that our God has a certain way that he would, you know, he wants you to live, live godly in, in ways and, and uh, people don't want to change their lifestyle. Yes. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't know what to do. But, but you still, even if they don't know, they don't want to hear you, you still are there. You are a voice. Mm -hmm. You are a voice. Even if they want to hear, they rebuke you, they scold you, they spit on you. We are, we live in a free country. But in other countries, they persecute you. Oh, I know. I know. You know, I, I think that this life that we live is just the blink of an eye. Yes. It's just dust, you yeah. know? And um, I would say to people, you want to buy a car? You do all your research. You know, who can give me the cheaper one? What kind of car should I get? And you do all this investigation to get the right kind of car. You buy a house. 
the same thing. <laughs> the, the, the same thing, but you only own, you only own the car maybe five years. The house you may own maybe average twenty years, and you do all this research. We're talking about an eternity. Yes. Forever and ever and ever. And if you're not going to research to find out is is there really a hell? Is there really heaven? You know, is is Jesus Christ really true or not? And you don't research to find out what happens to your soul. You know. For the rest of eternity, you're really not loving yeah. yourself yeah. enough we to are, do that. We are in trouble right now because these schools, everywhere, this, they don't want to know about God. Right. They yeah. don't realize that this is the only help we can get. He's a helper. He's right. the, the paracletos. Mm -hmm. He's our helper in any time. But people don't look for that. They look for uh, quick rewards. Right. Like uh, doing things emotionally. You know, when you do things emotionally, mm -hmm you won't get anything. But right. if you think with a purpose and you take the right decision, you pray about what you're planning to do, then the Lord will hear you. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. um, Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, my people. But now people, sometimes they read that verse, but they don't read 15 and 16. Shall pass. It says the that the Lord has, uh, the, His eyes are upon us. Mm -hmm. His ears are upon us. Mm -hmm. So he's listening to our prayer, and his eye eye upon us to guide us. So, well, you know, it's just amazing. The God that created the universe, you know, of heaven and earth, and all created all the things that are seen, not seen. Want, wants our love, wants us to give us our troubles to him. You know, and just to point the fact that he cares and loves us so much that he really wants to be there for us. And what do we do? We, we reject him. Yes. So um, we bring anything to God that we can handle it. Because in God's hands, there will be what? He will be handling that for us. So he will cleanse us, worries, resentment, hate, for all that. He said, say, God, here, take this. Mm -hmm. I cannot handle it. You handle it for me. God will handle that for mm -hmm. you. And eventually you will see it. Yeah, when people come to accept Christ, you know, people on the outside just don't, they just don't understand the concept of the Holy Spirit now comes to live with you, the helper. You know, that's such a, a far off thing for people to think, you know, the supernatural. But when you think about it, this physical world that we live in, the supernatural is more real than the physical world that we yes, live in. I believe that. You know? Like but I believe, like you say, uh, uh, the spirit, the Greek word is paracleto, that is to help you. They say paracleto, to help you in your way. Mm -hmm. See, there's only one way, mm -hmm. not to the left or to the right, but just their way. It's the only one. People believe that there's many ways to get to heaven. No, there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, sometimes people say, yeah, but I, can't, I don't see God. I, I, you know, I can't see him, so he's not real. There's no faith. And I say, do you ever see the wind? You know, <laughs> you can't see the wind. Well, look at the destruction yes, that, can that it can cause, but you don't see it. You know, but God also will take his power not for destruction, but to help you, because he really wants, he, 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 he wants life, he wants life abundantly for people. Yes. It's just that we don't use that power that he's given us to be able to. Yeah. What, what he's given us is just to, to live a godly life, mm -hmm. not to live according to the flesh. And we can't do it flesh. based on, but we can't do it based on our own flesh, to live a godly life. It's only through the power of the Holy through Spirit the power that the lives Holy in Spirit, you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, in many ways, uh, giving God uh, the things that uh, worry us. It just uh, tend us to give you, replace it. Mm -hmm. The worry, I give you peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, you consent for this, I give you peace. You hate for someone, I give you love. So mm -hmm. to replace, it's like the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But it's giving us, that's why it's number, number nine, which is uh, self-control. People don't have self-control right now. Right. They don't think about the things that precede self-control. Mm -hmm. You have to have love, kind of peace. So people don't think. They just mm -hmm. they blow their mind right away. 
and then they realize that there are consequences when you don't do the right thing. Right. Um, yeah, because if we can possess the fruit of the spirits, like we say, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, then that, if we could possess that, then that it will be what gives us the power to live that godly life. In the flesh, we want to tell people love. In the flesh, we want to, you know, sometimes do things that we shouldn't be thinking. But it, again, it's in the spirit, you know, so then eventually, so what happens is then we become righteous, we become holy, we become pure. Mm -hmm. The word says that uh, what comes through your mouth is from the heart speaking. So all what you have to speak in kindness, in love, no offense. Mm -hmm. See, we, we, when you speak to someone, when you speak to a child, my little one, she's already singing and she prays at the table. This is something that she got that through the parents mm -hmm. and through godly life. Mm -hmm. So we have that put it inculcated into my, my daughter's mind that this is the way to live. Mm -hmm. And if you live that way, everything will go well. Well, that's why it's important to have um, godly parents because they're the ones who's going to build that foundation in, in their child to teach them the ways of the Lord. Yes. You know? I believe that. I mean, think about this parents out there that's teaching them totally the opposite. What kind of foundation do they, will they have when they grow up? You know, because it, 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 it's going to be crumbling down because when they come through trials and situations where they need, you know, the help from God, they won't even know to pray and ask God for How help. to handle it, yes. They will find overwhelming with, uh, it's like they've been putting a lot of weight on top of them that they won't be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. But if you pray, it's like uh, something coming out of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so even the fact that it actually... Um, you may be going through your trial, but you're having peace going through your trial. Yes. So when you let your heart handle that, mm -hmm. and you might to think about the things that God is giving you that will give you power. Mm -hmm. So just removing something heavy and giving you something light. You see, right. He cannot give us more than what we can carry. Mm -hmm. And even if He gives us something <laughs> to carry, He will carry us on his arms mm -hmm. so we can be a light right right not heavy uh, well let's say uh, like a weight uh, 50 pounds 100 pounds or whatever mm -hmm. he just take it us with us mm -hmm. and then the Lord will help us right. to go alone mm -hmm. and eventually that will be gone right. you say how how that happen mm -hmm. say well the Lord is being witnessed. Sometimes you see the miracle healings. Oh, yes. When someone, you know, oh. has got a terminal illness. We've been praying for uh, healing right now. Mm -hmm. My little one, he's seven months old, and he's just going through some condition we don't know yet, and we keep praying. Well, you know, the way, you know, God tells us in the Bible is that it's finished. Jesus already did yes. whatever that situation is, and you got Jesus just got to believe it, you know, that he's, that he's well. Instead of begging Jesus to heal him, he's already healed. Yeah, yes. Because, you know, he's that's what you got to think, not begging him because it was already done. Yeah, but we still have to pray for the, pray for one another. God yeah. says that. Jesus right. said, pray for one another. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we keep praying for the needs. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, prayer line at church. Mm -hmm. That's loaded with prayers. But mm -hmm. people don't, don't pray. They put the loads of prayer on you. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we have so many uh, prayers for so many things on uh, the function of families what well, mm -hmm. we have in church but the function come because they were never tr were, they were never were trained mm -hmm. if you train it he will come better off mm -hmm. when he's older he will never live the way he was trained mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right now we have with the media TV radio mm -hmm. uh, magazines all that is this is all junk mm -hmm. but we have some radio stations some places where you get nurture you can buy something, you can eat something out of there. Mm -hmm. You get books and uh, read it to your child or mm -hmm. give it to friends. I like this book, uh, I don't know how many, but I know they've been sitting a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm giving them away too. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter. All what I want is transmit what the Lord has done right. in me, right. and what God will be able to do in in you or anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this is the purpose for this book. Right. We're not. I don't want people to misunderstand either that if you become a Christian, everything will be perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes you get more trials oh, to, yes. to strengthen you, to build yeah. character, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Trials and tribulation bring us character. It builds up something and in, in give us strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, it's today, but don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring his own worry, but yeah. today we handle that. I mean, you know, think about it. If, if you weren't given any trials and everything was perfect and things like that, is, is that person's faith strong? I don't think so, you know, because part of them thinks that it's because of them. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. where sometimes when you're going through trials, that's when you're relying on God and you see his power working in your life. And so then now you see that it's not you, it's just, it's, it's God. I always say that I always go down to the floor to nail my needs and praise God. Mm -hmm. And he will lift me up from the floor. He will clean me up and say, okay. Here you are. You're ready. It's like he's giving you power. He's giving you strength. Mm -hmm. That heart. Uh, sometimes I touch my heart and I, and I say, Wow, Lord, you're touching my heart because I feel like you, you know, we have that, that uh, breath of life there, mm -hmm. and I know he's holding his hand into our heart. He's giving you, live, 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 live. So until the day that we'll stop for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's time to go. And, you know what? <laughs> and it's a hundred percent. Yes, that it's going to happen. Some people, when I used to sell insurance, what is the percentage if you think you're dying? And they're like, oh, forty percent, sixty percent. And I'm like saying no. to them, I'm sorry, but it's a hundred percent. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. <laughs> you yes. know. Well, everybody wants to go to heaven, mm -hmm. but not right now. Right. They, right. They're waiting the time. Right. In the meantime, well, sometimes there's a waste of time. Some people believe that there's a heaven, but they don't believe that there's a hell. Yes. Well, Jesus talks more about hell than oh. heaven, you know, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, how can people get, uh, be able to contact you in order to be able to uh, get a book? Uh, you, is there a website? Is it's, there? it's a website, and uh, they can get it through the Sulum Press, um, Barnes & Noble, mm -hmm. uh, Books A Million. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this one's also going to be in Kindle. Okay. Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble had I've seen so much success with this, mm. you know, so that it would help people that need encouragement, that, yeah. uh, you know, need to be able to draw closer to God. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. And um, if you're looking for a guest speaker, I'd love to be able to share my testimony of how God saved me both physically and spiritually uh, through my book and sing some songs in between as well. And if you could be able to like my Inspire Blessings Facebook page, so this way you'll be able to get more updates about Inspire Blessings and guests, as well as uh, liking my uh, YouTube, Jean Marie Prince. So this way if you subscribe and if you miss these shows, then um, you'll be able to be notified when this show airs. So thank you so much for joining us today. So keep Inspire Blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. For more information about Jean Marie Prince and Inspire Blessings, please go to jeanmarieprince.com. That's J E A N M A R I E P R I N C E.com. Thank you so much and God bless. My life is in your hands, my life is in your hands, you took control when I